this land that you have entrusted to us, we commit back to you and pray that you would restore and heal us. Welcome back to another telecast of Canada Awakenings Healing the Land, a telecast that is addressing the social, economic, environmental, and cultural issues, particularly on our northern communities in Canada, from coast to coast to coast, uh, particularly the indigenous peoples the, uh, that, that have, I think, a great calling of God upon their lives to... Uh, rise up as children of God who have God as their father and are connected to the things of the earth. We talk about Mother Earth. Uh, the masculine and the feminine actually come together in Christ so that we can form families that have both a father and a mother that will reflect the creator who created humans in his image as male and female. And so... Um, we know that in every nation, in every community, apart from a relationship to our creator, we think in terms, well, somebody has to be the head of this. Somebody has to be the point person. And that's true in the natural. But if we understand that there is a head, there is a Lord over all creation, over all nations, uh, Jesus is called the desire of all nations. He is the Lord of all nations. He's the Lord of all creation. And so that as the people of the nations come into relationship with him, that we will also start to come into relationship with each other and people of other nations. And, and someone said, Robert, that we make uh, believers out of individuals, but we make disciples of nations because every nation has something, some knowledge of God that we can learn from that is needed in order for us to grow up to become more like Jesus, And so that's why in this process of discipleship, it seems to be that there needs to be um, intercultural connections and relationships of trust that are based on equality, recognizing God as our head, moving in sync with his laws and his ways, his idea of ownership and who human beings are, that we are uh, sons of God. We are not... And we're daughters of God. We're not God himself. But we need a relationship with the one who created us. And so um, to see this vision that we've been talking about the last couple of episodes come to pass, the, the, the importance of partnerships between indigenous and non-indigenous churches especially uh, to address these problems because we all carry something that the other needs. None of us has it all, but we need one another equally and we need a relationship with the one so so I, i've seen this in your writing a fair bit about the need for partnerships and and i'd like you to explain a bit about what you see that the indigenous peoples carry that the rest of the church needs and also what is in the rest of the church that indigenous peoples need so we need to partner and share our strengths in ways that we can go places we've never been before yeah, thank you well, uh, you mentioned about the, the culture. Uh, we are a multicultural nation in Canada, uh, but there was one, only one cultural group that is segregated, and that the indigenous people. Mm. So uh, 
I take them as kind of a distinct because, you know, some of the distinct is that stands out. You know, the, there's a cultural group here. There's only one group that's standing out, the cultural group, and that's indigenous people. So um, we were placed in this uh, country called Canada. We were the original, the first inhabitants, uh, and we believed in the Creator. We believed in God. At some point, we had a personal relationship with the Lord. Uh, somewhere along the way, we kind of just drifted off. Uh, so now, again, going back to De Deuteronomy 28 chapter, where it says the foreigners will come and take things away from you. So right from the onset, you know, the indigenous people have gone through a lot of, you know, hardships, you know, suppression, oppression, depression, you name it, you know, uh, because of the things that have happened, because they got sidetracked from the creator that they served, the, the true creator that they looked up to. They got sidetracked and these things began to happen. So now <clears throat> we are indigenous people uh, and I'm speaking on my own beliefs about this, you know, what I yep. think about this. I'm not uh, you know, trying to say anything bad about anybody, but I'm, what, what I'm thinking, I'm speaking out loud. Um, when God placed us in uh, Canada, we are stewards of this nation. Like Chinese people in China are stewards. Japanese people in Japanese are stewards of their nations. Mm -hmm. you know? They were placed there. And then people started moving in and began to take over your, your you know. Um, and God will remember his remnant, what is left, you know, there. Um, so it's important to focus on indigenous. And people ask me, why are you only focusing on indigenous missions when it should be all nations? You know, because, well, I want to, I want to focus on this first, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. And and that's why now I'm kind of appealing everybody to work together because if we could look after this, it'll look after the rest of the the nation. One time I came to a meeting, we were discussing about missions, missions, Canadian missions, you know, like where the funds are going to be priority, what's a priority in our mission field in Canada. So they're, they're having a percentage of the population we have 96% of non-indigenous and only 4% of indigenous. So we should focus more on this bigger field here, focus more on just a little bit on this side. And I was sitting there, so I'm not getting in the end of the bargain. Oh, this, I need help here. So I'm thinking, you're going to create a forest fire. Are you going to lay the mats on the green grass mm, or yeah. on a dry parched land? If you lay it on a dry parched land, it's going to burn all the green. But if you lay it on the green, it's going to go out. It's not going to burn maybe for a little while, but yeah. it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So with that scenario, uh, we need to really focus on the pe this cultural group that are segregated from the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot assimilate them into the nation, you know, and we cannot separate them either but we need to integrate them in, into the nation so we could become one, one nation, yep. you know, one people in this country. And we need to start with this uh, revival, with this message, the gospel message. Let's, let's do something about with this little, little dot on, on this earth. Let's help it. It's important. This is important. Just like the rest of the world here. Israel is just a little dot in the world here, but it's important. Yeah. Same thing with the indigenous yep. people. If we don't, if we fail to look at the indigenous people, we're going to fail big time. Yep. You know, we we need, we need to. Maybe maybe some of them. I say I, I don't like those people. They're getting government funding, billions of dollars in government funding, and you know they they're living all free. Uh, they begin to despise them, say something, but they're important. Mm. They need to be. They need. We need to do something together as a whole, you know, to come. Let's do something for this in order to help the rest of Canada. Yeah. That's how we're going to bring about the healing of the land is going to come into the rest of Canada. Yeah. You know, if we could only focus, if you know, this, this, these communities. And 
and our people are teachable. Mm. Yeah. And, but we don't have any resources. We can we I myself cannot teach them, you know. I, I do my best to teach them, but I can only do so much. Yeah. And um it seems like I am running out of time, but I am not running out of time because God is still going to do what he's going to do. If he cannot give, get attention from the rest of the people here, he's going to bring another nation to bring, you know, fulfill the, mm. this, this yeah. you know, mission that is yeah. happening. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so as I read the Bible, I see that, you know, in the early church they taught, the apostles taught that, God did not leave himself without witness in any nation. That there was some, not, even the fact that he made the sun to shine on the evil and the good, and he made the rain to fall on just and unjust. No matter how you behave, he loved everybody. He showed to the people of all nations that he was a good God. He, he, he even loved his enemies. Yes. Uh, unlike many human beings. And so um, he did not leave himself without witness. Uh, even in the world of nature, it was mm -hmm. evident that mm -hmm. the one who created these things, the one who sends the rain, the one who sends the sunshine, um, was good to all. Yes. And, and we can trust him uh, to be the one to look after our needs. And uh, as I also look in the 17th chapter of Acts, I believe it is, that it says he decided the boundaries where he mm -hmm. placed different people mm -hmm. with different languages different cultures in different mm -hmm. parts of the earth. For what purpose? That they would seek him yes. right where they live. Yes. That they can find God. They don't have to travel to another nation. Mm -hmm. to get. They can find him right where yes. they live because it's in him we live and move and have our breath. Mm -hmm. And so we're encouraging people here to seek the Lord right where you live. Yes. Right in the community where you are. You can find him. He's not far from every one of us. Mm -hmm. That's true. He's as close as our breath and our heart and our mouth. Yes. And that's why our the beliefs of our heart and the words of our mouth are so important mm -hmm. that we come into alignment with his will to bless our community and yeah. say, God, show us yeah. what we must do yes. in order to be healed because mm -hmm. yes. he's the only one that can do it. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we need to come together. Uh, that brings to my attention about the... the the issue of uh, truth and reconciliation. Yeah. You know, the, the wrong that has happened to the indigenous people in the education system. Uh, uh, the, there was a truth brought out, you know, for the first time. The outside people never heard about what was going on. They never heard it. Yeah. Uh, so they're probably stunned to, you know, to, to hear what has happened. Uh, so there's a truth that came out. But now the reconciliation needs to come, like, Let's get back together as one and, you know, enjoy each other. So, which is good. But uh, to me, I think, uh, you know, I think the government is also to be a, to be a part of this major play is, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I think the true reconciliation would be to, to bring the people together, um, like to integrate the people into the society. Mm -hmm by not feeding them anymore, but, you know, helping them educate it, you know, to, so they could become part. So it, it's, a, it's a dual, uh, a dual system. Uh, we, we live in a dual world here. Yep. We look after the business uh, and economic part of it and also the spiritual side of it. And uh, so we need to really uh, get get the government as well to change their policies, you know, to to help. Uh, like right now, I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of funding provided for cultural programs and uh, land-based programs uh, where people are trained, or young people are being trained to be a trapper and a fisherman, and you know. Uh, we're living in a modernization, you know, like we're living in technology, <laughs> You know, it's hard for me to say to my son, my son, go with that training. You know, I want you to go back trapping and fishing. You know, you know that. And that would be to me a waste of time. When I should have told, when I would like to see him, we need more funding on technology. You know, it's been advancing. We need to equip. You know, 
my son more into this, I would, like I would say. So um, true reconciliation would be the government to change the policies, how they disperse the funding, uh, because it's destroying, to me, that's how I see it, destroying our communities by handing out continually. Yeah. You know, people, we need to stop that at some point. We need to just educate people. Mm-hmm. And uh, our people are very teachable. And they will learn if you, if you allow them to learn. They're teachable. Because I taught, I taught them. They listen. The people that you think would never learn, I've learned and I've worked with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember... Um, <clears throat> When Elijah Harper called a sacred assembly back in 1995, and he was saying back then that what has been missing in all the hard work that's gone into reconciliation mm-hmm. and healing, and he said, well, healing and reconciliation is important in all spheres. It, it must be most firmly rooted in the communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, beginning there, yes, uh, it must begin... Uh, and and. And we must also bring in the spiritual element. And I yes. remember the prime minister at that time was John Credian, and mm-hmm. he got up and made this statement. He said, uh, Elijah Harper, you are found a new way. He said, what's been missing from all the hard work mm-hmm. has been the spiritual element. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and he acknowledged that. But we still went back to trying to, you know, to really make that, the priority mm-hmm. that what gives us a basis for reconciliation except the spiritual element that we come from one creator. Yes. We come from one source who created yes. us all and who loves us all mm-hmm. and wants us all to prosper and to be in health. Yes. Even as our soul prospers. Yeah. 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 That's important. You know, it has to start from the home, from the yep. individual. Yeah. And, and I experienced that myself, you know, like uh, I was, uh, I, I guess I could say a day school survivor mm, yep. because I was deprived of my elementary education, the basic education. I never learned anything about fractions, additions, and multiplication or mm. writing or reading from nursery, well, kindergarten to grade eight. Absolutely mm. nothing. All I knew was, uh, you know, the bell that was held, to, you know, time to come in. Yeah, the bell. Yeah. The, the bell, you know. And then to sit in a classroom to keep your mouth shut. Mm. And then the work kids were hyper. We all want to be mischievous. And yeah. we, we get a strap, we get abused, and we, mm. you know, we, all kinds of things happen to us. That's all, we, that's all I, I learned during my elementary school years. Um, and then on grade, uh, grade, eight, grade nine, thank goodness there was a teacher that was very thorough in grade nine, so I, I learned all the major subjects very thoroughly. That I had, I averaged about 99 percent on on all wow. subjects. It was like the Lord put somebody there to prepare me for high school. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to high school off the reserve, I had a culture shock. Racism was at its best, and I, I really got hurt. I was ridiculed in school, you know, like that. Teacher would make fun of me, call me Big Chief. Okay, you talk. I didn't even know how to speak English. I never spoke English. I did, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was 16 years old or something. I, I didn't know how to communicate. I was at a culture shock. Mm. So I thought to myself, now this is intergenerational. One day I'm going to get married. I'm going to make sure my kids go to school off reserve. I'm going to make sure they speak English. And without realizing, I did that. From nursery to graduation, my kids went to school off reserve. I never taught them to speak our native tongue. They lost that. You know, you talk to them over the phone, you won't even notice they're they're indigenous. That's mm. you know. Uh, wow. So because of intergenerational, and myself, I began to study real hard in school because I was shocked. I was jolted. I began to excel in high school. I was uh, even in sports. I was a quarterback and. Like in in everything, and then, and then I, of course, I finished, and then I, I even went to university. I completed university, and out of that, I began to accumulate a lot of accolades, a professional accolade. I was a, a provincial magistrate, you know. I was a, 
a board of director for the regional health authority, uh, uh, vice chair of the audit committee, and uh, I was uh, awarded the order mantle for making a positive impact in the province, and I was uh, a nominee to the Senate of Canada. I became a member of Parliament, constituency advisor, all the accolades, because you know I didn't dwell in my problems. Mm. Wow! I had to move on. I had to move forward. If I would have dwelt on my problems, where would I? I wouldn't oh. be sitting here today. Yeah. Look at it, because I moved on. Yeah. You know I didn't dwell there. I pursued. Look at look at where we are today. You no, know, today I'm appearing to the. Canada, you know, yeah, yeah. to help, you know, yeah. to do something. And good. you are a great role model now. So yeah. that in times of crisis, yes, and we can look into this on another episode, perhaps. But like when the, at the Water Hen, yes, crisis where there needed to be a, a negotiator that could put down and settle down those that were ready yeah. to take up arms yes. to fight, you were able to bring peace into the situation because exactly. you experience peace in your own heart first yes. and foremost that you could bring peace we need leaders like you yes. robert yes to rise up who can be honest and admit where there's injustice and not side with injustice yes but do it in a spirit of peace yes that's the sort of leader we want yes. to raise up we want yeah. to see disciple we're going to go further into this in uh, our next session but right now we'll take a quick break and we'll be, we'll be right back it has become more apparent that these things need to be resolved and that the political process has failed us. I believe there is something missing, which is the spiritual element. It is the children of God that will carry the message to the political powers of this continent and other continents in order for them to understand what we must do as human beings in order for us to be healthy again. Establish your kingdom throughout this nation and heal our land, O oh Lord. Okay, welcome back to the program, and we're here again with Robert McLean, who's sharing us his wisdom. He's a man of peace, a man of reconciliation, a man uh, who has a great past, but even more has futuristic thinking. And I think as we think of the future, Robert, we have to think that God has a land of promise for each and every one of us, where his promises will be permanently fulfilled. We'll see the giants of suicide and the giants of mental depression and the giants of addictions and of uh, substance abuse, to see those giants defeated and replaced by the, that, that vacuum at the core of our life being fulfilled uh, with the relationship with our creator God as he's revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, we want to continue to build on what we have been covering the last uh, uh, couple of episodes. Um, you know, when we're in the wilderness, like it's interesting that both the born again experience, which is likened to the feast of Passover in the nation of Israel, and the the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is likened to the feast of Pentecost. Um, Passover was experienced as they came out of Egypt, out of the world system, which happens at the born again experience. Pentecost happened, uh, the comparable experience they had was at uh, Sinai, where God came down and he wanted um, them to become a nation of priests unto him. And But they didn't pass the testing in the wilderness, so they had to stay in the wilderness. Jesus only stayed in the wilderness for 40 days, but Israel was there 40 years before they were willing to say, we're going to believe God to go into the land of promise, and we are going to inherit the promises of God. And so that's the generation, I think, that God's raising up, a, a generation like David, 
who, and Joshua and Caleb, they're going to come out of the wilderness and they're going to actually enter in to the land of promise and inherit the promises of God. And, and that requires a dying to ourselves, a dying to our old way of thinking. Only God can do this. We're going to have to trust him like we've never done before to come into our inheritance as sons and daughters of the living God. So uh, I think what we're projecting, there is a land for us to inherit, but it's going to take a new type of leadership. Joshua had to lead differently than Moses did. And, and we were raised in a generation that saw God move one way, and your son Marty will, will do things differently. But we have to bless that generation and see them, see that generation come forth with a fresh new prophetic anointing that will release God's word to this generation that they will actually go in to see the promises of God fulfilled where whole cities, whole communities will be set free and delivered. You've seen a measure of that in your lifetime, but there's still a greater fullness coming of, of inheriting the promises. There is a land before us. We, we want that to be an encouragement to the people listening. So, yeah, um, what has God put on your heart to speak to people like your son, who we're going to be showing on a future episode here, um, how they must lead building on the foundations of uh, what has taken place and what you've seen take place in the past? Yeah, thank you, Roger. Yeah, I think uh, it's very important to... Uh, you mentioned about uh, dying to self, yeah. Uh, because uh, a lot of people live in, the, uh, like I mentioned, dual system again, the the natural and the spiritual. Uh, brings to my attention the, the the story again about Elijah uh, meeting the, the prophets, and he would say, "How long are you going to carry two two things, two opinions?" Yes. You know, our people are carrying two things. They're bombarded with the, the daily life situations and they're trying to live a Christian life at the same time, you know. Or maybe they just live one way. So they're, they're struggling in the wilderness area. All the carnalities, the material, the physical, uh, you know, these are all carnalities, you know, the, the, yep. the natural fleshly things, you know. Yep. <clears throat> where we need to start <clears throat> um, looking up again, follow the, the Lord's teaching, uh, take his cross e every single day, take that cross and follow him. And and uh, just ask the Lord to crucify our old nature, you know. And that's been my prayer for for ever since I got saved, you know. Every day, I never forget to, to take the cross. I say, Lord, take Robert McLean's nature, I don't want my human nature to be in a way. I want your divine nature to to be resurrected in my life. I want I want to die to self. So, <clears throat> and and it's something that you don't really feel anything when you pray like that, but you believe you are being transformed into another another. Mm. You know, you you know that transformation. You don't feel it, but you know a transformation. So when when things. Uh, tribulations, persecutions, and everything uh, begin to rise in your life, you don't feel them. So you, you could use an example, uh, um, a person in a coffin. You could slap them. You could yeah. do anything you want. They're not going to blink an eye. They, they don't feel anything. Don't feel they, it. They're, they're dead. Yeah. Wow. So we need to die to self like that so we don't feel, have an effect. So mm. these things that trouble us because we are, we are resurrected. So we need to be transformed from the wilderness setting into mm. the spiritual setting. And this is where we need to, to get this next generation ready. Mm -hmm. We need to quickly equip them. This next generation are going to be faster the way they're going to present the gospel than what I did in my generation, in my time. Like I, 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 was, I was with the people in the wilderness trying to equip them. Mm -hmm. But now they're going to step into this promised land where there's exceeding great and precious promises, yes. which they will be partakers of the divine nature, mm -hmm. not the human nature, but the divine, divine nat nature. Divine wow. nature. Yeah, yeah. And with that, like say, like somebody like Marty, now passing that, uh, saying to Marty, now run with this vision. 
Mm. Marty will use technology. Yeah. He'll be able to reach several communities even around the world that just a moment notice exactly. with the technology. Whereas I had to travel through winter roads and all the travail travel, and yeah. you know bumping around and getting yeah. hurt and getting cold and being stranded and he doesn't have to put up with that. Yeah. Everything is just gonna be like instant, instant, instant. Or, you know, this is gonna spark up big time. Even this uh, this presentation here today it's just going to spread out like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's going to reach out Amen. to non-indigenous communities, and people yep. are going to say, "I want to be a part of this. Exactly. I want to be there. I want to. What can I do to help?" And mm. this next generation are going to be ready to receive, you know, whatever help they, they will yeah. have. Yeah. And it'll be the latter rain that's going to take place here. Mm. Yeah. Latter rain very quickly. The latter rain, well, just like it'll bring the crop to maturity, this latter rain is going to bring yes. the church to maturity. Exactly. To reflect the real Jesus that's ready to enter in. Jesus went through the wilderness in 40 days, and then he moved out and saw the promises of God. Everywhere he went about, he was doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. But we notice that in the wilderness, like God did everything for them. He would send them water out of a rock. He would provide manna. Uh, for them every morning they didn't they, they didn't really have to do much but he did it for them but in the promised land mm -hmm. now the manna stopped and they had to plant their crops they had to um, you know sow their seed they had to dig their wells yes uh, he put minerals and in, in the land that were there to be not uh, used for the exploitation of nature, yeah. but the responsible development mm -hmm. of the resources that the Creator has given us so that the people can prosper yeah. and, 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 and develop business partnerships where they can take personal responsibility. Nobody enjoys just receiving a handout, mm -hmm. but God is going to open up all kinds of doors where we can invest yes. in one another yes. and see prosperity come. Mm -hmm where we're not just reliant on government yeah, programs, yeah, but yeah. where we give glory to the one who gives us the power to get wealth, yes. uh, as it talks about in Deuteronomy 8, and to um, see our, our needs met, not just enough to get by on, but enough to bless other people. Yes, That's true prosperity, I believe. And if we yes. have a heart to bless yes. and not to curse, then the more blessing, the better, because the more we can share, mm -hmm. the more we can help people that yeah. are in need. Yeah. So, uh, you're again, uh, it's very important that, you know, we transition from the wilderness setting into the promised land here. Yep. And that's by by dying to self. Yep. Uh, like here, when... I, I, I picture myself on this side, and I'm moving over to the other side. Uh, of all the years I've been uh, discipling and, and equipping uh, communities, you know, the leadership that I put together at one point began to turn against me, you know, mm. like viciously. But as a leader, you gotta you gotta love you know the good and the bad. You cannot just have favorites. No. Even the worst ones, you you gotta embrace them and pray for yeah. them and Amen. love, love Amen. them. If you're gonna be a leader, you have to love everybody, exactly. regardless. You know, otherwise you're not a leader. Exactly. So now, in my lowest moments, when the ministries began to desert me because of the defamation and all the trying to ruin my reputation, like this is an enemy at battle here. But I don't feel them because I'm dead. You oh, know? I, wow. I don't feel anything. Uh, mm. When somebody, when there's strife, divisions, those are immature things. Those mm. are baby stuff. You outgrew everything when, when you're, you know, when you're dead to self, you outgrew everything. So you see beyond them, you still love those people. So in my lowest moment, all by myself, I, you could feel it too, eh? Like, and that's when uh, I, I mentioned to you one point at one time that I had a call from this lieutenant governor that I was awarded with the Order of Manitoba. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in my lowest moment, you know, when when the enemy comes in like the flood, the Bible says, the Lord will raise up a standard. Mm. And then while I was being defamed, the Lord raised up a standard on me and, and honored, honored. Me, honored me with the the highest order the province can give to its citizen. Mm. And now, when I go to the leads, I walk around on the second floor, I look at the plaques, you know, people that have died, that have accomplished 
you know, important things are on the plaques on the wall on the second floor. I come to the last one, and there's a plaque hanging there and says, Robert McLean. My name is there. Hmm. And I thought, I thought only dead people were on a plaque. <laughs> well, I wow. am dead to so sell, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as long as that plaque is hanging there, people could slander me, could defame me, could talk about me. God has put something, you know, like mm. a seal, you know, because you're dead to self. Yep. It's important for people to learn to die to self so they don't feel those things that come against them. Mm -hmm. The Lord has put you into a land of rest. Yep. You're resting. Powerful. Powerful. You're resting. Wow, so good. Yeah. So it's important I stress that uh, our people learn to die to self every mm -hmm. day. Amen. I mean, because unless that happens, when we get treated unjustly yeah. and um, unfairly, uh, the temptation of our flesh is always to return evil for evil, and that's how yes. we see justice. Exactly. But I think uh, where indigenous justice is needed more and more in our society is over against the the British system, which is a punitive system of justice. Yeah returning evil for evil, which causes people then to lie and not to tell the truth, because if I tell the truth, I'm only going to incriminate myself. Mm -hmm. I believe that in the indigenous world, the goal is to see restoration of relationships. Yes. And to do that, we need leaders that will even love their enemies, that will not take, that become unoffendable, mm -hmm. and that will love even those that have uh, said things that are unkind, because we know that each one will still be accountable to God for their words and for their actions, mm -hmm. but uh, but He's we can trust Him to bring about justice. But our our role is, as ambassadors of reconciliation is to pray for all people, to love all people, yes. to be like Jesus in this mm -hmm. present evil world, returning good for evil instead of evil for evil. Yeah, that's right. And and that's the sort of leadership that the enemy has no. Uh, weapon against mm -hmm. that can prosper. Mm -hmm. And because we know that the righteousness we have is not our own righteousness. We receive the gift of righteousness as yes. a gift. And, and, but but uh, it's his righteousness, and so we can let him be our righteousness. He can be our defense. Mm -hmm. He can be our vindication. Mm -hmm. We don't have to even try. God's dealing with me about this, and he's speaking to my own heart about this, to stop yes. trying to justify yourself. Mm -hmm. and even explain to people how right you are. No, God wants to establish us all in a relationship of righteousness. Right. And yes. In our next episode, we want to get into the power of words mm -hmm. and speaking words, how powerful they are in operating in the type of authority that will mm -hmm. shut down the powers of darkness yes. and allow the kingdom of light to rule and reign in mm -hmm. our communities. So don't miss that. Uh, you have some powerful things to share, Robert. Anything you want to just leave us with before we, we, we sign off for, the, for this particular episode? I think uh, I would be looking forward to uh, the next sessions we'll be doing uh, on the, the power of the tongue. Yeah. People need to understand the power of the tongue and also the even the mind, you know, how you think. Uh, we need to start using that because we're using them the wrong way. Yeah. We, we need yeah. to learn that and we need to tell the world. Yeah. And that's part of the the transformation you know, to, to an, yeah. another level if we could only do that. So what you're going to be sharing in the next episode is absolutely powerful. Please don't miss it. Tell your friends and neighbors to tune in to next week's telecast because it's going to be a key, a vital key, to seeing true transformation come. The power of blessing is greater than the power of cursing. Let's be those who bless and curse not. Thank you for tuning in today, and we'll see you again next week at the same time. God bless. God bless.